Welcome back to Old School Sports. And today we're going to do another tutorial video. I've had a few requests in the comment section of previous videos that hopefully uh, this video will be responsive to. Got a question a while back from Malcolm Clark, kind of wondering, what do you do when you're starting a new game? Particularly if you're somebody new to OOTP. There's definitely lots of menus, lots of pages, lots of statistics, lots of decisions to make. So there's a lot of stuff out there to think about. And then I also recently got a request from JRRD to do a playthrough of the St. Louis Cardinals. And while I don't have the St. Louis Cardinals on the short list of teams that I'm going to do a long-term or consider doing a long-term playthrough with this year, I figured at the very least we can take a look at the Cardinals in the context of how I would start off a playthrough. So if you find this video helpful, would appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and uh, maybe check out some of the other content we have here at Old School Sports. Without further ado, though, we're going to jump into 10 things to think about when you're starting a new game in Out of the Park Baseball. And my recommendation would be to do as many of these 10 steps as possible before you even move the game forward one day. And I'm sure that there are also dozens of other things that are important to do when starting a new game that I'm not covering in this video. So if you have some ideas on other important things or very helpful things that you do when you start a game out, would love to hear about them in the comment section down below. The first thing is pretty obvious, and that's to uh, click on the link right at the top of uh, the task list and meet your team. Pretty good summary screen here that kind of lets you know the big time major league players you have. In the case of the Cardinals, Arenado, Goldschmidt, Tommy Edmond, top prospects in your system. You can see positional rankings, you know, taking a quick look here at the Cardinals definitely seems that they're Pitching could be the potential issue, at least compared to other teams in the league. Get a quick overview of your finances, your team staff, and your team history. Also would recommend after you kind of get to know the real big guns on your team, going in and just taking a quick look at your pitching staff. Uh, you can ask your manager to update their choices. Clearly here with the Cardinals, we see what was kind of alluded to on the previous page. Uh, you've got Jordan Montgomery, Mike McCollis uh, as your top two starters. And it gets, uh, it gets weak after that. You know, Jack Flaherty is a guy with below average movement, probably going to give up some homers. Dakota Hudson, not very good stuff at all. Steven Matz, pretty brutal movement. Uh, definitely not a great rotation and definitely not a good bullpen. Um, so definitely would be thinking if I was taken over this team, I want to try to improve the pitching staff as much as possible. Also take a quick look at uh, your recommended lineups and depth charts. You can see it looks like they're in pretty good situation as far as their catchers, although neither one is really a standout defensively. Uh, you know, Goldschmidt, Donovan, Arenado, Edmund, and infield looks pretty solid with Juan Yepes and Nolan Gorman. Looks like even have some decent um, utility guys in the infield, as well as Taylor Motter. Could maybe use a little more pop in the outfield, although Tyler O'Neill and Lars Nootbar can both uh, hit the ball over the fence. But spend some time with the pitching drop down, the lineups drop down, just getting to know the team, asking the manager what they think you should do, and uh, trying to get a first glimpse of what you think the strengths and weaknesses of the team are. Seems like an obvious step, but that's certainly the first thing I would do, kind of start making an initial assessment of the players you like, the positions that you're strong at, and where you might need to make some improvements going forward. And once you know a little bit about the major leagues, my next thing would be to go to the organization tab and the minor leagues. 
and figure out what you've got in the organization. Easiest way is to just uh, search on all players, look at their potential ratings, and you can kind of see the players who could potentially be stars for you down the line, as well as uh, if you search on overall ratings, you can see some players who may be ready to help you in the near term as well. Get a sense of the top prospects in the game, looking at your star ratings, looking at who's listed as the top prospects in your system. You can see just from this uh, first screen here, it does look like there is potentially some pretty good pitching help um, that's in the higher levels of the organization. Matthew Liberatore is in uh, St. Louis already, but Gordon Graceffo, Michael McGreevy in AAA, um, as well as Tink Hentz. Um, so there's definitely some pitchers that may be able to help this team in the not-so-distant future, given that that's an area that we've identified as a weakness. Might want to make some trades to fill one of those, some of those holes immediately, but you'd also hope that some of these players you can develop and get them to be big contributors uh, in the next year or two. And the player development tab in your front office will also give you a nice overview of your entire organization. You can see the money that you've got set aside for development in the draft and international amateur free agency. Uh, different way of looking at the top prospects. You can see here with the Cardinals, they've got five top 100 prospects in the sixth overall system overall. You can also kind of see one assessment of the prospects in your system and where they are. Uh, and you can see, as we talked about, starting rotation helps. Uh, looks like it's coming very soon. If uh, we were looking for a center fielder, though, it looks like the uh, top three prospects in center field are arguably all in rookie ball. So that may be an area where making a trade or trying to pick up a free agent may help fill that gap for the next several years before Ramos, Fletcher, and or Cabrera are ready to kind of man center field for your team at the major league level. And the third thing I would do also here on the front office tab is figure out the financial position that you're in. Here with the Cardinals, big market, extreme fan loyalty, uh, Average-ish to above-average fan interest, not off the charts, but still pretty solid. Uh, you've got the 11th biggest budget in baseball, 13th biggest payroll, and you've got a fair amount of money available. So you are going to have the ability to take on some contracts if you want. Uh, one thing that I would do generally when taking over a team if I've got money to spend is also to put a fair amount of it into my scouting budget and my player development. And if you want more information on why I think those things are important and a lot more details on how big investments in scouting and player development can help you out, uh, there is a full tutorial video that I put out on finances, scouting, and player development uh, in October of 2022 if you're interested in more details on those topics. Um, but certainly think that um, using a fair amount of the money that's available here to bump those budgets up would be something I would definitely be thinking about if I were in a long-term simulation with the Cardinals. And as I mentioned, you're in a decent position where you can take on some salaries through trade or there's not going to be a ton of free agents here on March 28th when the season is starting that are really going to be difference makers. But you can also uh, maybe spread a little bit of that money out to some free agents who you think can help fill some holes on your roster. And staying on the front office tab, the uh, fourth thing I'd jump into right away when starting a new game is to take a look at your salary situation. Obviously have a lot of money invested in Arenado, but he's one of the top third basemen in the game. Uh, that contract may three or four years from now not be looking all that great, but certainly not something that you need to get rid of right away. Uh, Paul Goldschmidt, till a pretty, still a pretty productive player in his mid-30s. Uh, Wainwright, you know, coming off a strained groin is definitely not the pitcher he was uh, in the past. Fortunately, you only have him for one season here at the age of 41. Uh, if you were looking to really supercharge a rebuild and you could get that contract off the books now, that would open up some more money to spend this year. Uh, Mikolas uh, 
kind of similar to Wainwright, obviously not as accomplished a major league pitcher, but in the last year of his contract, so that's not a uh, huge fear. Uh, the Wilson Contreras contract, still a pretty big-time catcher at the age of 30. That could be looking worse a few years down the line, but right now certainly not a horrible situation. Uh, Steven Matz, probably not a great contract with two years left on it. That would be one that maybe I would think trying to get out of uh, potentially. But there's really not horrible contracts on this team. Uh, some of them, as I talked about, you know, if Arenado or Contreras age very early or have some significant injuries, those contracts are long enough that they could become difficult. But I do like the way the Cardinals have kind of structured the Arenado contract, at least for game purposes, where it's uh, going to be kind of getting to less and less money in those out years if he does decline as he gets into his mid-30s. So some teams, there's going to be obvious contracts that you just want to get rid of. I've been doing a New York Yankees playthrough in these early days of OOTP24, and uh I spent some time getting out of the Aaron Hicks contract, got out of the DJ LeMahieu contract eventually, uh, still have not been able to get out of the Giancarlo Stanton uh, contract. But there are teams like that um, with bad contracts, certainly if you think about other teams around the uh, major leagues right now, Steven Strasburg, Madison Bumgarner, uh, Miguel Cabrera, those are some of the big contracts that if you're taking over those teams are things that you may want to think about addressing sooner rather than later to open up some more money. But here with the Cardinals, the, the salary situation seems pretty responsible and pretty well managed, which is kind of what you'd expect from a uh, organization like the Cardinals that always seems to be competitive. And our fifth thing that we'll look at right at the start is uh, your personnel. We'll stay right here in the front office tab. And if you want more details on this one also, uh, there's a big video I put on um, basically building a coaching staff uh, that I put out about a year ago in April of 2022. If you want a lot more details, definitely would appreciate it if you go check out that tutorial. What you're going to want to do is go through coach by coach and kind of figure out who's good, who's not, how long they're signed for. We know that the Cardinals are in a decent financial situation, so if you do have some horrible coaches, uh, you can probably pay them out and move on. And you want to make sure that your minor leagues are solid in terms of coaching, too. You look at this uh, AA Springfield Cardinals team, and you've got a pitching coach, Eric Peterson, who's fair at teaching pitching but poor with development and mechanics and you've got a batting coach in brock hammett who's fair at teaching hitting but poor in development and mechanics i think those would be two obvious positions to just pay them out and upgrade you don't want uh, your top pitchers and your top hitters kind of getting up to double a and thinking that they might be a year or two away from the majors and then they don't really progress very much in terms of their player development because you don't have particularly good coaches in the organization and clearly you want to do that with your entire coaching staff um, when you're starting a new game or at least that's what my fifth recommendation would be Sixth tip when starting a new team would be to think about your staff cohesion and your team chemistry. Taking a look here at team chemistry, you can see that our manager, Oliver Marmol, has bad relationships with more than half the team. Uh, that is definitely not a great situation, uh, something that I don't know that you fire the manager right at the start of the playthrough, but it's something worth thinking about since he's clearly not getting along with the team. It does seem in terms of his ratings with the good development, good mechanics, good at handling aging, that he could be an effective major league manager. But um, his relationships are either fantastic with the uh, position players and generally pretty horrible with all of the pitchers. Um, kind of a interesting dynamic there given Marmol's background but uh, 
you've got a guy that's basically hated by the entire pitching staff and it seems like he despises the entire pitching staff so that could certainly be a area that you might think about addressing immediately uh, fortunately the players seem to get along well there's no one who's disruptive outspoken selfish or unmotivated that you might want to get rid of uh, you've got a captain a lot of leaders spark plug um, team chemistry is content right now no player complaints uh, check in on these things at the start of a playthrough and then also when you're thinking about your coaches take a look at your staff cohesion see who doesn't get along you can see here hitting coach turner ward uh, struggles with people with normal personalities which include the assistant gm the manager and the first base coach so that's probably going to be a little bit of tension and then your manager, Oliver Marmol, struggles with temperamental people, Turner Ward and Ron Warner, your third base coach. So uh, if you get rid of one or both of those guys, you could definitely improve the cohesion of your staff as well. Um, so with a lot of these things, you just want to nip the problems in the bud. If getting rid of one or two coaches or getting rid of one or two players is going to make your clubhouse a much happier place, probably better to rip off the band-aid and do it right at the start of the playthrough particularly if you're in a situation like we are with the cardinals here where you've got the money to be able to do that the seventh thing i would actually do is to start allocating some more money to scouting and player development uh, if your team is below the major league baselines which the cardinals are on all of these uh aspects as i mentioned i did put out a video on this uh back in last october definitely check that out if you want more details but uh at the very least with a team like the cardinals that has a pretty big budget I'd want to get the scouting and the player development budgets uh, moving up in a better direction. Certainly want to have the international amateur free agency at uh, 4.75 million, uh, the baseline level. And then you can see we're actually even a little bit low on the draft budget here right now as well. So put a little bit of money in there and uh, start ensuring that if you're in for a long-term sim, that you start investing that important money into both scouting and player development. The other thing you're going to want to do at the beginning of a game is uh, adjust your scouting sliders. Uh, I tend to invest significantly less in the minor leagues and the major leagues and uh, significantly more in amateurs and international scouting. Uh, but whatever scouting budget settings you want just make sure that you change those right at the beginning of a playthrough because otherwise they will lock for the season and uh, you won't be able to adjust them again until you get to the next off season the eighth thing i'd look at when starting a uh, new game is what ballpark are you in and what type of factors are there you take a look at all these ballpark factors and if you've got the uh 1,000 on these is kind of the league average. So you can see that in terms of your batting average, in terms of extra base hits, uh, the park is going to have a little bit of a negative influence on all of those things. And then home runs overall are definitely going to be lower, uh, particularly by right-handed batters. So definitely a park that favors pitchers a bit overall and fairly significantly when it comes to home runs here in st louis in bush stadium uh, obviously there are parks with much more extreme figures than this you think about colorado you think about the yankees you think about fenway park uh, there's definitely more extreme parks but if there's something that you can start thinking about based on the ballpark factors that will allow you to bring in players who may excel in the environment that you have and also just deciding whether you want to be a team that maybe wants to focus on good pitching with good contact hitters and fewer power hitters since it is difficult uh, particularly for right handers to hit home runs in in st louis those may be the types of things that um you can start thinking about as you consider how to build your team going forward. 
And the ninth thing I check in when starting a new game is who your owner is and what's their personality. You can see with William DeWitt Jr. Uh, demanding in terms of his patience. So uh, you could be getting fired by him a little more sooner if you're not producing. Fiscal personality is charitable, so should have money to build a competitive team. Uh, his involvement is normal and his priority is balanced. Uh, so he's not going to meddle much, uh, but he's also not just going to totally leave you alone. And then in terms of his priority, that means he's balanced between trying to win it all and just trying to extract every penny from the franchise, make as much money as possible, uh, regardless of trying to win on the field. Uh, so a pretty balanced overall personality from DeWitt. Also get a look at your owner goals if you're playing with those on. In the new version of OOTP, uh, there are options to negotiate some of those goals. We don't have any here with the Cardinals, but uh, if you can see here that improving fan interest by 2024 is a high priority goal for Mr. DeWitt. So signing uh, some popular players that boost fan interest may be in your uh, in your best interests as the general manager of this team if you want to uh, keep your job for an extended period of time and start building up some credibility with ownership. And the tenth and last thing I would think about when starting a new game is uh, what do you want your game settings to be? Go into those global settings and these screens can be extremely intimidating particularly for new players you can basically control just about anything you can view things in many different ways uh, but you're going to want to make sure that you've set up the game um, the way that you want it we were just talking about owner goals if you don't want owner goals just click off on those um, I always like when I'm a GM to be in control of lineups and hiring, even if I have delegated uh, some of those responsibilities to a manager, like to be able to overrule them when at all possible. Uh, you get into your players and team settings. I usually like to see personality ratings on the profile page, so I usually click that one back on. Um, you can change your injury frequencies here if you want. Lots of options here. Uh, face gen, I don't spend a lot of time with. AI settings, uh, this is a real important one. Uh, from my first week playing OOTP24, uh, I think I'm going to want trade settings pretty much all the way to the hard, maybe a tick or two back when I start my long term save. We'll see how things go over the next couple of weeks before we get going with that uh, if you want to use the hard mode if you want to use the reputation system or not i personally haven't found the reputation system to be as uh, interesting as i had hoped so i like the hard mode don't really love the reputation right now but obviously set things up the way that you want uh, almanac database i don't really mess with this i know it's real important to some people depending on what they're trying to do with the game League settings is also a tab where you're going to be able to uh, change just about anything. League and teams, if you want to change um, the way things are set up. Rules is an important tab at the beginning. Do you want different sized rosters? Uh, do you want a Rule 5 draft? Do you want people to be able to refuse minor league assignments? Uh, trading situation. I usually allow injured players to be traded. If you want to uh, circumvent customs in Major League Baseball and trade draft picks, you've got the opportunity to click all of that on too. Clearly, I'm rushing through these um, and not covering them in incredible detail. Also have your financials, your team options, uh, if you want automatic evolution of the league. And you can see all of the different aspects that that can take. Uh, if you want to change the awards to the actual names, if you want to vote for the Hall of Fame, uh, tons of stuff to do on these tabs. Uh, players, you can kind of control the universe of players that are going to be coming up through the minors and being created and showing up in the drafts and showing up in international amateur free agency and scouting discovery and free agency from other countries. Uh, and then if you're a historical player, 
and then if you want to kind of adjust the type of <clears throat> statistics that your league would generate uh, there's obviously tons of things to do in all these settings uh, the goal isn't to go over everything but uh, just to let you know that when you're starting a new game uh, that's probably a good time to spend a few minutes with all of the different settings and uh, figure out if you want to tweak anything quite honestly if you're someone who's brand new to ootp i'd probably suggest just keeping 95 percent of it the same to start if there's a couple things that you're particularly interested in or passionate about that you want to change go ahead and do that but uh the game is set up to be uh pretty fun with the default settings so i honestly do the same thing myself and uh spend most of my time just playing with the default settings and obviously we could go into great depth on all 10 of these suggestions for things to think about when starting a new game and as i noted at the beginning there's dozens of other things that you could think about when starting a new game also. Just wanted to put some initial ideas out there for people who may be newer to OOTP, may be intimidated by the amount of information and the amount of choices that are out there, and give a little direction on some things that I think could be important to figure out, as I said, before you even click forward on the first day uh, to hopefully make your playthrough as successful as possible. If you've got other ideas on what people should do at the start of a new game, would love to hear about them in the comments down below. Until our next episode, thanks so much for watching and hope you have a great day.